Good afternoon. Uh, my topic today is ODP, orthodontic dehiscence pattern. My name is Jeffrey Miller. I uh, graduated from Towson University, did my dental school education at University of Maryland, uh, got my orthodontic certificate at SUNY Buffalo, my board certification in 1991. I've been in private practice in the Maryland area for 32 years. I am a member of the Circle of Excellence from 3M, and I frequently speak on orthodontic topics as they relate to cone beam CT. Uh, this patient was transferred to us by uh, another orthodontist. Uh, she had moved to our area, and these were her original <coughs> photographs. You can see she's a class two division one with significant upper and lower crowding. Here's her uh, Panorex and her supplementary x-ray. Uh, the treatment plan for this patient was the extraction of two upper first bicuspids to correct the overjet and obtain a class one cuspid relationship leaving the molars in a class two position. These teeth were uh, orthodontically round tripped. As you could see, there's rectang rectangular wire in the uh, upper, both upper and lower arch. But the upper arch th didn't utilize the, s the extraction space until everything was lined up and um, ready to be retracted. Now these are photos of uh, the day that she came to our office for consultation. You can see that the cuspids are just about class one. There's still a little overjet. There's some torquing. There's some uh, still some things to do, um, but not too bad uh, as it appears clinically. We took a cone beam CT, and uh, this is what uh, she looked like. Now this this visualization of the dehiscence of all the roots although it's not uh, completely accurate in the on a comb beam CT on a 3D reconstruction, you really have to go to the, the slices to get a better uh, or a more accurate perception of the amount of dehiscence. There's a definite pattern, pattern to these types of cases and they're called ODP, orthodontic dehiscence pattern. The patient on the top right is uh, not the same patient as what we're looking at the Comey CT. I pulled that uh, image uh, off of Google Imaging. You can see that this patient clearly was overexpanded, uh, and there's a generalized dehiscence of the roots that are significant. <laughs> that is what is referred to as orthodontic dehiscence pattern. You can see that all these roots have been pushed past the limit of the alveolar housing or the boundary. That type of uh, boundary violation can be visualized using uh, CBCT. So what prior to that, you'd have to wait for that patient to develop a problem, end up in the periodontist's office, and let the periodontist flap the tissue. Now, uh, comb beam CT, you can pretty clearly see uh, ODP associated with the orthodontic treatment. Now, this, this there was an abscess associated with the lower right central incisor. It just so happens it's coincidental. If you look at the axial view of the lower incisors, these were sliced through uh, a, a little past the, um, the CEJ down the root, and you can see it gives you a better idea of how much dehiscence has occurred. Now, 53% of all teeth will have some form of dehiscence or fenestration. I think that's fairly well documented, but it's the, it's the magnitude. And when you see this generalized pattern of dehiscence, uh, it's not what occurs naturally by any means. This is something that occurs as a result of orthodontic, ex, ex, mostly over expansion of orthodontics or violation of the bony housing. As far as this patient that we're reviewing right now, uh, here's what I believed happened. Uh, you have the original malocclusion. They level, the teeth were level and aligned. So uh, assuming this is the original malocclusion, they were level and aligned, which meant they were flared out uh, to a larger radius to accommodate 
the, for the uh, lack of room or the dental crowding. That uh, creation of the bimaxillary protrusive uh, relationship was then attempted to be corrected with rectangular wire. Well, when you use rectangular wire on a tooth like this, you better be aware of the supporting bony anatomy because the center of rotation becomes the bracket slot. So although this tooth was uprighted and certainly looks better in terms of the position of the tooth in terms of torque, it's uprighted. As it's uprighted, it dehisses through the bone. In other words, there's not enough bone to support the new position or the corrected position of that tooth. Then the tooth is retracted back over the bone to get it into a more favorable position or reduce the overjet. Unfortunately, the defect that was created by the round tripping seems to follow the tooth back as it is retracted into this final position. And you can kind of see here from a sagittal view what that you know looks like. And this is, you know, this is unfortunately the reality of it. it would have been much better in retrospect on this case if they would have not round tripped those upper incisors. If they would have just retracted the cuspids, made room, and then uh, aligned the teeth within the bony housing. This is a, another case that's actually uh, fairly similar. Uh, this case is it's cl uh, class two division one sub left. It's class one on the left, class two on the right. It's a lingually locked incisor. As you can see, he's a 29 year old male. Uh, you can see uh, this is a 3D reconstruction. I took the cone beam and I uploaded it to Ormetrics. Ormetrics allows for simulation of orthodontic treatment. You can see that he already has some dehiscence, but this is not an orthodontic dehiscence pattern. This is just a natural pattern because he has uh, a lack of space for all the teeth to line up. Here's what I did, and we, we extracted upper right uh, unilateral bicuspid. Here I simulated the treatment as if we were round tripping the teeth. So I, I moved these teeth around to get them to align. That would be similar to round wire. And you can see what happened here. You can see a significant amount of dehiscence. And now I haven't even simulate putting uh, rectangular wire in here. You can only imagine if these teeth were torqued, then the dehiscence would be significant, significantly more. Uh, as you can see, the way we treated this case, we used uh, incognito linguals on the upper and traditional appliances on the lower. Uh, we weren't attempting to align the anterior teeth until we had room for the upper lateral incisors. You see there's no brackets on these teeth. We're retracting the cuspid back. Here is after nine months. This is the first day that these, the lateral and central were engaged. Here he is at 10 months and at 11 months things are starting to line up. At 11 months we took a uh, a progress cone beam CT to see where where we were and see where mostly where that upper lateral incisor. And remember this patient started with some dehiscence associated with these anterior teeth and you can see from the, the pretreatment versus 11 month treatment these teeth are still fairly well centered within the alveolar housing to the best that they can. If you notice there was a dip here in the alveolar housing because the bone tends to be dependent on the root, and it's not un unusual for that the uh, bone anatomy or the housing to follow the position of the root. You can see we did de dehist here slightly. So from a uh, this is the upper uh, right lateral incisor. You can see the pretreatment and what it looks like after 11 months. <laughs> Here he is finished. Um, there's the finished occlusal axial view, and this is tooth number seven, upper lateral incisor. There is from the coronal view.
and you can see the progression from September of 2013 through August of 2015. So here is the pretreatment comb UCT. Here is the 3D reconstruction uh, with using our metric software to uh, which we can simulate treatment. Here's the simulated treatment. And here is the actual post-treatment comb beam CT. You can see that the simulated treatment using the metric software is very, very similar, almost identical to um, what happened uh, actually clinically. You can see here, you see there's a little dehiscence around that upper lateral incisor, and you can see it here as well. Uh, thanks for listening. If you have any questions or any comments, uh, feel free to email me. My email is uh, drmiller at orthodonticassos.com. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed this short presentation.